Michelle Weiss Bachman, who is a shipping analyst and markets editor over at Lloyd's List, which is a business information service. She joins me now uh, from London. Uh, Michelle, good to have you on the show. Um, I think you must agree that things have become slightly more complicated, haven't they now? I mean, ships are uh, rerouting their journeys around the tip of Africa. Yes, indeed. I mean, that's going to create significant log jams for the container sector that will um, cascade down through the global supply and logistics chain for weeks, if not months now. Okay, um, if we could sort of further talk about uh, the ramifications uh, if this ship remains stuck. I mean, how does it affect uh, everything from the shipping industry to we as consumers? Well, the Suez Canal, you have billions of dollars going through in consumer goods every day through the Suez Canal. And um, these are all on containerized ships, which rely on regular schedules. And unlike tankers and um, other vessels where there are alternate supplies of oil that, you know, you can avoid them, these vessels have to go through the canal or they have to divert and take longer, I think the, an extra 10 to 12 days. So what this means now, it's going to sort of dislodge everything. You have vessels go round, you'll have delays um, um, loading now at Asian ports, you'll have um, problems getting empty, enough empty boxes through, you'll have um, vessels not repositioned in the right areas because everything is being thrown out. So this is likely, as I said, to cascade through um, everyone from consumer goods to manufacturing components. Um, there are, you know, the car and, and factories rely on just-in-time inventories that these regular schedules supply, and these are now being thrown out. Um, as I said in my intro, I mean, we sort of calculated that, uh, you know, every hour that the Suez Canal is closed, it's costing the global, um, you know, uh, trade about $400 million an hour. Um, are we consumers going to be, uh, you know, are we going to pay for this? Well, typically, the the biggest um, change that you've seen immediately is a change in freight rates. Um, that's the cost to ship these goods because of the supply chain interruptions. And you see that um, whenever the you know de demand for a vessel and space on a bulk ship is exceeding you know what's available. So this is typically going to f um, feed into increased costs. But but freight is a quite a small component of these very high value goods. So I think it's more likely to be um, interruptions um, with um, the arrival of consumer goods and cars and the, the, the d d delay that it will cause to factories and the closures if um, just in time inventories um, are, are running out. But, but other than that, I, I don't think you'll see significant extra costs in that, in that respect. All right, Michelle, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate it.